In this tutorial, we'll take a very brief break from mapping images because I think now you have a pretty good idea of how to do it and practice is really the key to getting good at it. But we will take a look at the paint program again for another reason. In fact, let's just go get a new image in here. All right, we'll call it Lesson. That's going to be the name of our image. All right, because sometimes I like to use these uh, programs to draw images or create lessons because you know, sometimes I'll use, this, use the grease pencil but in here let's see what we can actually do with it so maybe we can get a really small p drawing radius let's see one let's see what one does oh that's a little bit too small but let's crank it up a little bit I don't know maybe a five yeah okay that'll work all right so now so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple things within the paint program but we're also going to just take a look at RGB values and color space things of that nature because some of the future uh, tutorials on texture maps are going to involve normal maps, bump maps, displacement maps, things like that and so we really want to understand color space as well because we're going to end up using color space for some of those and I'll show you what I mean in those lessons but for now let me just point out a few things in here that I found that were very quite cool one was the wrap tool. So in this is very nice. You draw one way and it just pops it on the other side, right? So you can create your seamless texture maps. That's a nice powerful little tool. Let's see, there was other things. This was fun up here. The color grid. You can just bring the color grid up here like that. And then of course, uh, okay, I'll change this. I'll just change my radius like this. And I'll go down here to my tools. Oh, I'll get a smear tool, right? And so of course we know what this is going to do we can just paint and this is what you don't want to get me started doing is because I will spend hours just goofing around with colors just for fun and then I never get anything done but but it is pretty powerful as we can see in here nice huh it's got a lot of yeah I dig it all right well so okay that was that all right so let's go back into where did that go okay get my blank here and then go back and turn this back into five for the lesson. All right, so we're going to look at RGB values just to make sure that everybody's on the same page before we get into the next couple of lessons. I'm sure most of you use them all the time, but just in case there's a one or two brand new students to computer graphics, just in case, right, I'm going to kind of give you some insight as to where this stuff came from and how it's useful to us. And um, it's an easy lesson, and we'll start right now. Let me see. So we have, you always see the values as R, G, and B. Oh, no, where did my... Where did my, oh, I'm in my smear tool, hang on. All right, so basically in the old days when you had a, when you had a computer and you had one of those big giant monitors, you know, on the screen, you, know, you probably, some of you probably never had one of these old monitors, you know, CRTs like this, you know, and they're big clunky things back like this, giant monsters, things sitting on your desk. All right. Well, when you had that, basically you would to draw to the screen, you had to draw pixels, you know, in a row across here and another row like that. Each one of those had a location on the screen. And to turn them into colors, you basically had what was called a digital to analog converter. We called them DACs, digital to analog converters. And what that would do, that would take a digital a file basically a number in digital format and convert it into analog and display it onto the screen. It would basically control the electron guns in the back of your uh, computer monitor. And the way it did it, it had three electron guns. It had red, it had green, and it had blue. And each pixel location on your screen was comprised of one of these, like this. It had red, green, and blue component to it. And what this digital to analog converter did, it varied the intensity of the color of each one of these guns in the monitor. And it would vary it like this. So we would take, it would basically go from all the way off to all the way on. So if you turn the red all the way on, well, let's, just, let's put red all the way on, and this and turn the green all the way on, and the blue all the way on for any particular pixel on the screen, say like right there, if they were all on, that would end up creating the color white. All right, like that. And that would be the color you would see on your screen at that pixel location. So any variation of these colors would give you the color that you saw on your screen. And they were, you know, nice smooth change of colors. And this is where you get these 
all these colors from that you see you have red green and blue your primary colors but then when you mix red and green together you get yellow and you, when you mix red and blue together you get magenta and when you mix green and blue together you get cyan like that and these cyan magenta yellow and then of course when you turn them all off you get black when R G and B is all turned off so this is where these keys must look familiar to you for work, from working in Photoshop or other things like that. So in order to get to these colors like this when you work in computer space basically when you specify red over here in the computer world in the digital world we typically specified it as a value between 0 and 255. The 255 represented all the bits of a one byte of information turned all the way on. Well, so if, and I'm going to show you what a byte is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, here's a byte. And this byte has eight bits of information in it. I've separated it into these four little components like that just so it's easier to see. I call these nibbles four at a time. And in this byte of information, it's turned all the way, every piece of information is turned all the way on. It's all, because a byte can only hold a one or a zero. And then this byte of information right here is turned all the way off. All the pieces are zeros, like this. So mathematically, if it, this is actually equal to zero in decimal, and this is equal to 255, like this. So if this was sent out to the computer screen, this digital piece of information went through the analog converter it would then turn all the R values on if that was for R and then if you had another piece of information that was say maybe this was green all right we'll call this R and we'll call this G for green and say this one was the byte of information for green it was turned all the way off so the zero would go up to here like that and then if you had another byte of information which was blue and maybe it was turned we'll just turn this like halfway on. This would be the 128th bit location. So that'd be 0, 0, 0. All these would be zeros in here. And this would be the value 128. So that'd be 128 in binary. And then that would send it to there. And so this combination of brightness so 255 would turn the red gun all the way on. Zero would turn the green gun all the way off in that case. All right, so we'll turn this off now. We'll make this off. Now this is off. All right, we'll turn off white because white's no longer there. And this 128 would turn the blue gun halfway on, and you'd end up with some color over here like this. All right, that kind of gives you an idea. And if you're not familiar with binary numbers, it's just like this. In the decimal number system we use the ones place and the tens place and the hundreds place and the thousands place, etc. And then you put your numbers underneath it to get your value like 2, 3, and 4 is equal to 234. It's 234. But in the binary world, what you have instead is the numbers are different. Their binary means, you know, two. So by is two. So basically it's factors of two. Decimal is DEC is factors of ten. So one, ten, each one is a one times ten is ten, ten is times ten, ten times ten is a hundred. In binary it start as, starts as one and then it's factors of two. So one times two is two. Two times two is four. Four times two is eight. 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32, and then times 2 is 64. I think you know where I'm heading with it, right? I know there's maybe one or two of you who haven't seen this before. Just in case, and this will really help. I know you just want to be an artist, perhaps, but trust me, this will help you be a better artist and animator. So these are kind of the locations of a byte of information. This is how they're, you know, segmented out value-wise. So then when I... Pre present a byte of information, say like this one right here with this 
where it's one zero 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 zero. Well, basically, I'm turning this value on, and I'm turning all those other values off down here. And what that does is it allows me to know what the data is. This byte of information now, which is four bit, which is eight bits of data. I know I just said, oh, okay, that means the 128th place is turned on. All those is off. So this thing is equal to 128 in decimal, like that. Now there's some particulars about that. This is what we would call an unsigned byte. Sometimes you use this top order bit to represent the rest of these numbers as negative numbers, but we won't deal with that right now. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea because this is going to be really important because we're going to store other information in these bytes of information for doing uh, one of the next couple lessons coming up. All right, so just bear with me. Oh, yes, this is really important. Yeah, oh, it is. In fact, even if you are an artist, all this is really going to become important to you anyway because if you're working in the printing industry, you're using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to print. Right in the computers, we use RGB. Maybe you use Pantone colors, or maybe you use HSV space, hue, saturation, and value. So every little piece of knowledge can really help you out to be a better animator or an artist. And especially since you have to deal with all this kind of technical stuff in the world anyway, you might as well learn it. All right, all right. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.